Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Well today we are going to be unboxing AMT's 1977 Pinto Popper car and this is a cool kit because you can build it in one of two different ways. So I actually went and got a second one and I'll be taking a look at this one because this one is still factory sealed. As you can see it's still got the little coca-cola stripe right here so without further ado let's go down to the bench and take a look at this amazing little model car suddenly it's 1976 and you've just pulled up to the arcade in your brand new fully customized 1977 ford pinto popper this model kit is from amt and is intended for skill level two ages eight and up so check out this amazing artwork we have here We've got the customized Pinto Popper painted in black with these Enjoy Coca-Cola decals on the side. We have a Coca-Cola machine which also comes in this kit. Unfortunately the arcade building doesn't. <laughs> that would require a bigger box. But check out this subtle little bit of extra Coca-Cola advertising right on this little billboard on the sign of this vintage store. I wonder if that's a store from the 1925 Model T truck. I don't know. But let's take a look at the side of the box and see what else comes with this model. On the side of the box, we are encouraged to build this model stock or custom, build it your way. So here they're showing the stock version, and this is a nice green Pinto with the CB antenna and the custom wheels. We also have the Pinto engine, which was a four cylinder overhead cam model. Turning the box on this side, we read customize AMT's popper Pinto with cool components. So we have the turbocharger for our four-cylinder engine. We have mag wheels, wide tires, and more. There's the gauges. Then we have authentic decals from Coca-Cola. Now, this half is for the machine, and this half is for the car. It says bonus, vending machine. And special option, windows injected in Coke bottle green. So that's pretty cool. Now the Ford Pinto came out in 1971 and went up into the early 80s and it was a very popular car among the youth because it was an economical car and easy on the gas. So let's take the lid off this thing and see exactly what's inside. So right away we have our instructions, we also have our decal sheet, then we have our tires and the rear red tail lamps. Then we've got the promised glass in clear as well as in the Coke color, Coke bottle color. There's the body and the bits with it. We also have this white sprue that includes the Coke vending machine. And then we've got interior parts as well as some body panels and our chrome. And that is it after that. So I'll just clear the box out of the way and we'll take a look at the instructions. So here we have the instructions for our little popper and right on the front page, it just has the important read this before you begin. There's no three quarter illustration of the car or anything like that, which means that we can get right into our engine assembly. So right here we have our engine block left and right hand sides. So you would glue those together first, then add on your oil pan the cam cover, which is chrome, and the oil filler cap. And then we got to find number five right here, which is the cam belt cover. Number six is the alternator going on to number seven, which is the pulleys. Number eight is the fan. And then number nine, we have our exhaust manifold. And number 10, we add our distributor. And then add our oil filter for number 11 intake manifold for number 12, the carburetor for 13, and your air cleaner for 14. Then drop down here and add in your starter motor for 15. Then for 16, we have the radiator hose, and it says locate in chassis assembly. Now if you want to build the custom popper motor with more pep in it, we have the engine block going together as step one, the oil pan coming up as step number two, then we have the cam cover and the oil filler cap going on as three and four, and then for number five we've got the cam belt cover, six is the alternator, seven is the pulleys, eight is the fan, and then nine we have our distributor, ten is the oil filter, and then eleven we've got the intake manifold, 
and then 12 we have the exhaust manifold, 13 is our turbocharger, and 14 is the intake hose, or the crossover hose. And then we have our carburetor is number 15. We have a special air filter for number 16. And then step 17 shows our starter motor going on. And then step 18 is the water hose. And again, wait till the final assembly to attach that part. Now to get traction on the road, we have our wheels. And these are the stock wheels here and the custom up here. So what we have is you do this four times. You've got your custom Pinto wheel in here and then your stock tire and the inner wheel rings in the back. For custom over here, we have two sets of tires. We've got wide ones in the back. So we start with our long mag wheels here and there's two of those. They go through the big tires and then we have the deep inner rings here. And all that will sandwich together. And then in the front, we've got the smaller mag wheels with the shorter end going into the front narrower tires. And then the thin inner wheel rings. And again, those all sandwich together. And once you have that all together, you're ready to roll. For step number three, we have our interior assembly. And all these parts go into the interior pan. So first off, we have our instrument panel and our steering wheel and then add in the gear shift lever into the center console. Here we have the handbrake going into the handbrake console. And then our seat backs for our bucket seats go into the seat front. And you're going to need to make two of these. And then you can add in your rear seat. And as an option, you can put in the Hot for the 70s CB radio. Now, if you really want to get accurate and technical, Check out these really crazy interiors for the 1977 Pinto. Now if you want to build the little popper version of the car, here is a custom interior just for you. So first off we have our gauge cluster, and then we have our tachometer, and the tachometer is going to glue on the steering column of the steering wheel. And this is going to go into the instrument panel, which will then glue into the same interior tub that we had in the stock edition. Then we have our gear shifter going down in here. And then you glue the seat backs onto the backs of the front bucket seats. Notice it doesn't have the rear seat in here, so that is something different. And it says, note, install both bucket seats if desired. So you could actually just use one and make a racing version of this car. Over here in panel four, we have the chassis assembly. And this covers both the stock Pinto and the Lil Popper. So what we have is our axle assembly here. So we've got our rear axle springs drive shaft and the exhaust pipe molded as one piece and what you would do is if you want to build the little popper you actually have to cut off the stock exhaust pipe and then next up you've got your two shock absorbers once that is glued down and then we locate our completed engine block from previous steps right into the engine bay here and connect it to the end of the drive shaft and uh, then where is number four? A little bit of a treasure hunt here. 4A. We've got the radiator wall being glued down. And then 4B, you locate the water hose into the top of the radiator. And then step five is our battery going into place. Step six is the Y-pipe, which is custom. It says locate the turbocharger on engine. Now that is if you built the custom engine, of course. And then number seven, you put on the two side pipes, one here and one on this end, which is not shown. Then you have an option for step number eight. So you have the two plastic axles, and that would give you your stock ride height if you were to put them through the axle holes here and here. Or you also have these lowering blocks just to get the front end down into the ground and have the back end jacked up. And then nine, it says locate chosen assembly wheels or chosen assembly wheels. So then finally, number 10 for stock only is gluing the catalytic converter onto that exhaust pipe. 
Panel 5 shows the beginning construction steps of our body. And what we have is the rear hatch window, the body itself, the front side and rear windows. Then we have the door glass, which is optional, and our completed bucket for the interior, and then the firewall. So the construction steps are first put in the glass for the doors, then put in the clear windows for the front and back into the body. Then bring up your assembled interior and glue that into the body. Turn the car over, attach your firewall, and then turn the car back over and attach the hatchback rear door onto that rear clear window. Here we have the final assemblies for both cars, and we're going to start off with the front end of the stock version. So here is our body, which you glue onto the chassis, followed by the front grille cap going in here, then the bumper and the actual grille going in. Next up, we have our two headlights, left and right hand side. Then we glue on our license plate in here. We then seat our hood in into the hood opening, attach our left and right hand side mirrors. Then we can pick a choice of our CB antennas that we want, roof mounted or like front fender mounted. And then for a little custom touch, you can add in these side pipes down here. The rear end assembly of our Pinto is quite easy, actually. You have your left and right tail lights, which are molded in red plastic and are attached into the back panel followed by the bumper and the license plate. Finally, we have some options for our car, and we also have the Coca-Cola vending machine. So starting with the vending machine, you've got the cabinet box, followed by the door, and then you apply a decal in here and glue on the clear front panel. Now, looking back at the car, here are the bits and pieces for the custom popper edition. So what we have is a custom spoiler, we have a rear cap in the back. We also have two new Nerf bars, right and left hand side. A custom exhaust going up in between here and our tail lamps left and right. These ones are in chrome, so you're gonna have to paint them red. Now down below, we have for advanced modelers. Now this is an extra little bit in here. Bonus, AMT's 1976 Pintera. Custom front end parts have been included in this 1977 kit for those advanced modelers who wish to use them. The front bumper grille part in particular will need to be modified to fit the updated 1977 body and blend it in with body putty. So there might be a little bit of extra work to do in here, but I think it will pay off nicely. So here you have the front bumper and grille being glued onto the body. You have your two Nerf bars and your two headlights going in place. And then this elongated hood, which will extend out to the front of the car. That's why I bought two of these models, so that I could build one stock and one as the Pintera. Which car would you like to build? The Pintera or the stock one or maybe a customized version of your own? Please let us know down in the comments below. I really want to know what you're going to do. Here we have our Pinto body. And there is a cross brace holding the front fenders on. We also have this little cowl up here and our windshield wipers and some great window trim molding. And then looking at the car from the side, you can see the wonderful door handle with the lock down below. We also have our side marker lights. There is a little sink mark right in here, which a little bit of putty should be able to fix. Another turn signal lamp up there side marker light I guess. There's our front end. Looks pretty decent. And then up in here is where it was attached to the parts tree so you're gonna have to file or sandpaper that out. There is what looks like a little sunken area in here that you could cut out of the rear fenders to fit those wider tires in if need be. Here we have the gas filler cap on this side of the car as well as a little Pinto script up in here on the sail panel and another Pinto emblem down here. So one of them has to say something different. It says runabout up here. So again, that's kind of cool. Kind of cool. Maybe not 100% cool. Oh, just kidding. There's our taillight panel, which is quite typical of the Fords of that era. Again, really nicely done. Now up in top here, we do have quite a bit of mold marks, which will have to be cleaned out with your number 16 hobby blade. 
Also looks like there's a bit of dirt around here, which is your mold release agent. So always remember to clean your model car bodies before you actually start painting them. Next up we have our interior panel and here you can see the little front console right there. There are four mold marks in the carpet here and in the back we also have the little bump for our spare tire. So if you would lift this up you would find the tire underneath. I believe that's how it's supposed to go. And then here we've got our side panels which are not bad but again being a tub you can only get so much detail into these it uh, does appear quite flat and our little window winders and door release levers and whatnot they're pretty flat onto here so you might want to carve your own and glue them on there over top of those ones turning it upside down you can see these big posts in here which locate to pins on the chassis and again it's nice and smooth in here but on the other side we do have mold marks in all these corners which will be quite visible because they're right where you're going to put your feet on the real car. Here we have the chassis of the Ford Pinto and as you can see it is quite short but then again it's a short wheelbase car and here we have two little pins and those go into the bottom of the interior bucket just to align it. There are some mold marks up in here but and here and here but again you can remove those with your number 16 hobby blade now turning the chassis over we have some flash into these corners which you'll have to remove with your hobby blades and sandpapers but here you can see the wonderful detail on that fuel tank we also have some brake lines in here and the wonderful floor pan detail this is a unibody and here we have the subframe right in here and then we have the lower A arms molded in place and an opening for the engine. So again, this isn't too bad, but it is really tiny and does suffer from quite a bit of flash. Ah! Here's our Pinto in a little bit of a dry fit. This is not my best attempt at dry fitting. As you can see, the interior is up a little bit in the car. It's actually crooked in here. There we go. But you can get a basic idea of how this all fits together and the tightness of the interior fitting in on the chassis. So overall, if I could just align this right, it does look like it's a pretty good fit and finish. On this parts tree we have the rear window, the hood, the elevation blocks for the front, shock absorbers, the crossover exhaust pipe, and our rear seat. So taking a look at this, we have the Ford logo or letters on the back of the tailgate, as well as on the front of the hood. This is quite a dirty casting as far as dirt in the plastic goes. So again, use that little toothbrush and your soap and water just to clean these up before you paint them. There's the Pinto hood. There is some mold marks in the four corners, as well as on the back of the glass here, or the tailgate panel. So again, remember to remove those with your number 16 hobby blade. But overall, for a tiny little kit like this, the detail is quite nice. Our next parts tree includes all the wheel rims for our tires, our steering wheel, the catalytic converter, the CB radio, and our choice of the two antennas, as well as the front clip. So again, it looks like a lot of mold release agent was used on this model. So I'm going to have to clean it up quite a bit. The CB radio looks relatively decent. The antennas are quite cool looking, but there is again a lot of flash on these wheel rings as well as in our steering wheel, so some caution will be required in order to remove them. On the back of the front clip there are four mold marks which need to be removed, but overall, I mean, this is what it is. On this parts tree we have another steering wheel which looks to be the stock steering wheel. We also have our license plates here and here, the back of the front bucket seats, and our entire rear axle assembly with our leaf springs, our differential, our universal on the drive shaft here, and then we also have our exhaust pipe. Remember to cut this off if you're building the custom version. Again, the detail on here is not bad. It might be a little bit weak compared to modern standards, but again, this is the only Pinto you're going to end up getting, and uh, there we got our seat backs. There are some mold marks. You'll have to get rid of them. But overall, it's not too bad. On this parts tree, we have our dashboard, the center console for the parking brake, the battery, 
both right and left hand side side mirrors. We also have the plastic axles and our two front bucket seats. So looking at the seats, the upholstery is pretty decent on them. And there's our dashboard with all the appropriate gauges for 77. Again, quite nice. You get a radio, you get a little bit of wood grain in here. So you'll have to paint that in a wood grain fashion. There we've got our batteries, or our battery, sorry, there's only one. Now our mirrors, they've got a seam line right up in the center on the glass portion. So file those down and sand them up really nice and then use your Molotol pen in there and it should look like a proper chrome mirror. On this parts tree we have all our components that make up our engine block including custom components over on this side. There's our rear spoiler for the car body and here we have our firewall and the radiator support wall. And what is that little piece? It looks like a front valance clip. So at any rate Taking a look at these parts close up, we can see nice detailing on that engine block as well as our little air cleaner and our fan timing cover. And uh, here on our firewall, we also get some of the wires molded in place. There is a texture on the radiator. Again, these are not bad parts. You just got to clean them up, take a little bit of time and patience, and uh, you should have a good model. Get rid of these sink marks all over here, especially on the valance panel, and uh, should look good in the end. On this parts tree, we have the custom parts, which include the front clip, the back clip, and the elongated hood for the Pantera, as well as these wheel rings in the back. So these parts have been smoothed out. There aren't any logos on there. Of course, that's to get the sporty look of the thing. But overall, these look quite nice and uh, should be all right to uh, install on the body. There's a bit of flash up around here, which will need to be cleaned up. But overall, these parts will add a bit of excitement into your Pinto. There are mold marks underneath this hood and on the panels, but again, cleaning them with that number 16 hobby blade will do you wonders. And as an added Coca-Cola bonus, we have our vending machine. And here we've got the back of the machine as well as the front. This is a cabinet, of course. Now the detail on here is quite nice. You've got the opener for the bottle as well as the coin slots and the little area where the cans would pop out and you would retrieve them. And then inside the cabinet, it's pretty basic, but there are some ribs just to strengthen it up. And luckily the mold marks are on the inside of this so you can easily paint it glue it together and not have to worry about correction. We also have these clear part components which consist of the front glass for the Coca-Cola vending machine and our red taillights for the stock version of the Pinto. So bringing these up to the camera again you can see the nice detail inside these tail lamps. You will have to put a little white dot in the center here for the backup lights but that's easy to do. Just take a look at the real Pinto in the back and see where they're located. Then here we have the front panel for the Coke vending machine. This bottom area will have to be painted and then each of the little pop decals go on there. So like Coke, uh, I think there's Orange Crush, you know, that kind of thing. But overall, again, this is really nicely done and it will look great on your model. Here we have the glass for our Pinto and up top we have the regular plain clear glass and down below we have the tinted glass. And I will say that the tinted glass is quite cool. One thing about it is some of the cars of the 70s actually had this color for their windshields. There was a slight tint. It wasn't just pure clear glass like it is up top. The only issue I have is with the side windows, there's mold marks right on the very edges. And hopefully the front pillars of the windshield and uh, back here on the back of the window will actually cover over these holes. Again, we have the mold marks up top as well as a serial number in the bars. But if you know about these early kits, this is how the glass was and it helped with alignment as opposed to just the straight windows that we get now, just as separate pieces. However, you could cut this out in here and do a little mix and match and have the front window tinted in green but the back as clear, which I do believe was sort of natural to what it would have been on the real car. 
But overall, again, the glass is nice. And it is nice that they put it in with this paper in between so that the, the uh, clear plastic won't scratch itself. Here we have our chrome parts tree. And what's interesting is you get four of the rally wheels, I guess these are, the, the customized Pinto wheels. And then you get one stock hubcap. So <laughs> you can build the you know, lower edition of the Pinto, the base entry Pinto model, if you buy four of these kits or have friends or people on the internet that will send you one of these hubcaps each that have built this kit. And then over here we have the mag wheels. And we also have a bunch of the chrome goodies like the gauges and the tachometer, the custom air cleaner, the exhaust pipes. And we also have our front and rear stock bumpers here. So I'll just bring all this up to the camera. Again, you can see the nice look of the wheels, almost like the Buick uh, rally wheel. There is that Ford Pinto stock hubcap. Then we've got our front and rear bumper. The grill is attached into the front bumper. And here we have overriders on the rear bumper. We also have our little valve cover here. And again, really cool stuff. The mag wheels for the rear wheels are open, as you can see. Four slots in the back. And then there's our tachometers and whatnot and the pipes. So again, really awesome stuff. On the back, you're going to experience some mold marks in here. Just get rid of them with your knife and paint it flat black in here, just like on the real thing, or maybe even a silver, sort of dull on the other side, as it were. There's our rear tail lamps for the popper, little popper. Again, you'll need to paint those with some Tamiya Clear Red and maybe wipe off the top so it's got the chrome lines in there. But overall, I think the chrome parts tree is the best of all the parts trees. Here we have the tires for the 77 Pinto. And these ones here are for the original Pinto, the factory Pinto. And these ones are for the little popper. And I thought maybe the front tires would be these ones, but they're actually a bigger tire. So to begin with, we have the stock tires and I'll just move the little popper tires out of the way. These are BF Goodrich Advantage tires, and the tread pattern on them is really nice, as you can see here. They will have to be cleaned up with your tire spinning tool, but there on the sidewall we actually have letters, which is really great. BF Goodrich, and I do believe it says the Advantage right here. So again, really cool looking tires for the stock version. So how do they compare with the little popper ones? Well, first off, you can't compare them because they're different tires. The little popper ones do not have the raised letters or anything on the sidewalls, but the tread is quite nice. It's that wavy style, which would, I think, these would be uh, Goodyear polyglass tires. But of course, the Goodyear is removed off the tire. I guess AMT didn't want to pay for the licensing fees for that. But again, the tread pattern is quite nice. And these are nicer tires than the original old Goodyear polyglass ones that have been in kits forever. And the BF Goodrich tires are really nice. All these are like retooled and they look fantastic. Here we have the decal sheet for the 77 Pinto. And it also includes the Coca-Cola decals for the vending machine. And this vending machine is really biased. All you can buy out of it is Coke, period. End of discussion. But some of the other ones had like a purple pop and a cream soda or something else. I know I've seen it. So anyway, there's the Enjoy Coca-Cola sign, the signs for the side of the vending machine, and of course these are all for the buttons, and then we have the little decal for the, you know, where you're going to put your coin in and all the rest. And then here are the decals for the Pinto Popper, to turn it into a Coca-Cola version. If I just turn them this way, we have Enjoy Coca-Cola, it's only in white, so you can't paint the car white and have this in red or anything. And then the little hearts say, buy someone you love a Coke. So that's always a nice sentiment. Maybe you can mail me out a Coke. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But overall, the red registry on here, the red and white, is really excellent. And they do give you some silver decals for the coin slot, which again is really quite cool. So overall, although these are not the biggest Coca-Cola decal sheets in the entire AMT Coca-Cola licensed lineup, they are quite nice to add to your vehicle. 
I hope you enjoyed that video where we got to take a look at AMT's 1977 Ford Pinto Popper. And what way do you want to build it? Stock or custom? Let us know down in the comments below. And if you want to get some great model cars, why not try our store first? www.monster-hobbies.ca It's an online web store where you can get model cars and many other different things like sci-fi, airplanes, military, figures, war games, you name it. Just check it all out, www.monster-hobbies.ca. And until next time, everybody, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.